Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's March 13th, 2016, and this week we're going to do a lesson in guitar soloing on picking apart chords. Now, this week's uh, question was sent in from Ruben. He's out in Bar Harbor, Maine, and he wrote in with this email. I'm uh, watching YouTube guitar lessons and noticed that a lot of guitarists play lead into very targeted notes of chords. It's like they've picked apart the chord being played and are just using an interval or two for their lead ideas. How can I practice this in my playing? The sound of picking apart the chords is awesome. From Ruben in Bar Harbor, Maine, USA. Well, thanks a lot for writing in, Ruben. You know, whenever a uh, series of chords uh, is moving along, you know, creating a progression, we can perform a basic guitar solo on it by just playing into the chord tones. Now, this is a technique often called picking apart chords, or, you know, I had a teacher when I was going to music Musicians in studio used to call it chord sandwiches, <laughs> and it works by just playing into specific chord tones. Uh, doing it all in a very simple way uh, is, uh, you know, just really doing it in a direction of using intervals. It's uh, really basic. You're using the intervals of the chords uh, that are going on at the very moment. You know, so I'll, it's just the chords are already playing uh, from the rhythm guitar part, and all you do is pick apart through that chord the different intervals, like the major third, minor third, perfect fifth. You can even add on uh, extended like a 13 or 11 or a 9th. So it's really kind of an interesting way of messing around with chord shapes and targeting right into the chord tones of the moment. So in this video, I'll be going through a few examples of this by first establishing a chord progression for us to work with and then demonstrating how this technique actually operates. So let's zoom in on the neck and get started. Well, let's get the foundation of this lesson together by establishing a chord progression. The chord changes I've organized for us to play over are going to be B flat minors key center. Now it follows a harmonic movement in this key going from the one chord for two measures through of B flat minor seven. And then we're gonna have the G flat major seven come up in the third measure. And then we're gonna do a drop down from E flat minor seven to F minor seven. So the chord progression is the one chord going to the six into the four and into the five in the key of B flat minor. Here's how those changes sound when you play them. All right, so that's the playthrough of the progression. We're gonna take a quick break, come back in a moment, and we're gonna go through that cycle of picking apart the chords method and uh, break down some intervals so we can create a melody over those changes. Well, the next idea we're gonna look at is playing over the chords with some phrases that we'll establish by just simply picking apart the chords and using their intervals to break down the specific notes for connecting into those chords with the strongest impact. Now we're gonna start off here with our first chord, B flat minor seven. In that chord, we're gonna pick apart the root, the minor third, and the perfect fifth. So they're gonna be the B flat, the D flat, and the F. Over the G flat major seven, we're gonna focus on picking out the major third, the perfect fifth, the major seven, and then we're also gonna add in the major sixth as well, it's an E flat. So those tones again, B flat, D flat, F, and the E flat over top of the G flat major seven. Now last two chords are gonna be E flat minor seven and F minor seven, and we're gonna be covering those with their minor third, so um, that's on the E flat minor third for E flat. Right? And then also on the E flat, we're going to add in perfect fourth. So that perfect fourth up top there is going to be ninth fret of second string. And then that other tone, the, e, the G flat, that's going to be on uh, the uh, seventh fret of second string. Then on the F minor seven chord, that chord we're going to go for the root and the minor seventh. So the root is going to be the F, and then the minor seventh is going to be that E flat. So 6th fret on 2nd string and 8th fret on 3rd string. Right now I have those chord changes in the pedal, uh, the loop pedal, and I'm going to fire that up and just play the uh, melody down that it came up using uh, just those intervals only. Here's how it sounds. So 
So as you can tell, it just fits perfectly against those chord changes because we're using the primary chord tones as our main line of thought and then filling it, you know, here and there with either, well, I only use really two outside intervals. I had the major sixth when we were functioning on that G flat major seven and also had that perfect fourth when we were messing around with that E flat minor seven. It gives you that um, impression of a E flat minor 11 when you do it. Really neat sound. So we're gonna come back in just a moment and I'm just gonna add on one more concept that's gonna use some double stop chord punches around these changes as well. Well, as you can tell, this concept of picking out intervals from the chord movement and then using the intervals as a way to build simple lines over the changes can work really effectively. And, you know, if extended intervals are also brought into the mix, the flow of the line can become even better sounding. But there's still one more way to expand upon this idea. And that's by adding in a matched interval applied through double stops. And this is a particularly effective strategy because that two note chord sound can be a really cool punchy way to help your guitar you know shoot through the mix a little bit better especially if you're playing with a lot more instruments maybe even live or so forth and this is a particular effective strategy uh, that can be used with uh, a specific interval I'm gonna be doing this and mess around with thirds so you can really hear how it establishes itself and builds up to a bigger sound by just adding that extra interval on top of the line I'll be working with thirds through the example here but you know you could certainly work on other intervals as well you could just experiment you know see what you can come up with but uh, here's how my third's double stop idea sounds. So it comes across as a really interesting sound. And I'm going to fire up the loop pedal and uh, just give you a chance to hear how all this stuff comes together. And, uh, you know, so the entire mix can be uh, sort of given as a, as a big perspective. So here we go. Well, there you go as you can tell when you build those thirds inter intervals together and uh, you know just mess around with the whole line where you're getting a little bit more movement out of it with the fact that the sound has been built up you know it's a little bit bigger sound a little bit warmer a little bit fatter tone out of that you can really make a big impact and sound very cool especially if you have a, a break in the guitar part and maybe you want that guitar to line to shoot out a little bit more over the mix so definitely take these ideas in stride these are some very cool concepts to mess around with they're not difficult to do and you don't need to learn Learn a whole bunch of scales and modes and new pentatonics and arpeggios and everything to apply them. All you need is the chord outline and you just follow that outline and you make up your lines. Well, any chord progression can be analyzed for its individual intervals and then have those intervals applied within a lead guitar part. The lead line will always function very strong when the chord tones are used to compose the primary melody line. And as we saw with my examples, the use of extended tones will also come into play, creating additional intervals that can help blend chord tones around the melody uh, picked from the chords, of course. Uh, all in all, this can be an excellent technique uh, to study and one that doesn't rely off of learning any new scale layouts or arpeggios. Uh, the chord voicing will give you everything required to build your lead parts from there. Anyway, that's about all the time that I have for today. As always, I want to say thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and if at all possible, please consider a small donation to help fund the Guitar Lessons Project here. Otherwise, have yourself a really great week and I will catch up with you next time. Bye for now. I'd like to take a moment to mention another guitar video lesson project I've started. It's a unique guitar lesson approach that I'm doing online, and it's not like anything I've done before. Best of all, it's 100% free. I've called this approach Guitar Micro Lessons, and they're a great way to learn a few new licks or riffs or chord shapes each week. Now, these Guitar Micro Lessons are quick and easy to learn from. They're very short, with each lesson running between only a minute and a half to two minutes in length. They're published to YouTube from Monday to Thursday on my other Guitar Blog Update YouTube channel, and you can either subscribe to that channel to guarantee getting each new episode, or just visit the channel whenever it's convenient for you and check out the new Micro Lessons in the playlist on the Guitar Blog Update channel's homepage.
If you're interested in learning faster, making better use of your time, and practicing longer, the Accelerating Your Learning Curve ebook is for you. Over 60 pages of information on how to take control of both the way you learn and the time that you devote to your practicing. Accelerating Your Learning Curve is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com.